<clears throat> took on some new photos that were interesting to me in a new article sent by Thunderbolt. So I haven't got your new name down yet, but I like the Thunderbolt better. <laughs> but anyways, um, this, I screenshot certain things that weren't in other articles and um, of course started off with this one that I found very interesting of how the car is facing going towards the highway rather than getting off the highway once again my thoughts and theories on that case and someone had um, I had this other article I went up on it wasn't this one, but one that just came up on Reddit. And that one had pretty much a bunch of same stuff I go over. and But someone did measurements. They literally went here, like I believe it said like seven months it was posted. So seven months ago, someone went out to this spot and measured off 130 feet of the tree that I believe she hit inches. Then you got 27 inches from the, you know, the curb to the road or the, you know, they got all these measurements, but, and they were saying that in this new measurement thing that, that she did hit a tree because some people say that she didn't hit a tree and the ditch she fell in the, uh, in this article that I got up that I'm going to show states that a couple, I believe in this house right here, 70. Um, the husband and wife, I believe, were debating back and forth of which way they saw the car and which way or who was in the car. Um, so somehow this car was moved or not moved and said the way I said it. She drove up, noticed being followed, turned around, tried to go back to where there was a public store, crashed into the tree. And like I say, as you can see the map in here, she's back this way. Hey! Turn this way, you know. My dog, I'm gonna kick him. He does not like to listen. Pug! But, um, what I did want to show was, um, what did I see? I saved this one for 10 miles of the Voice Auto Care Center Route 10, Haverhill, 9.27 p.m. So I just Smith dispatched to another call on Lion Kill. Get. So I mean this, with the accident and the car and everything being driven to the, um, and then this call comes in later on in the night suicide teenager this this literally directed everything off from this case so anything and I will give this that they did do a poor investigation you know they didn't do enough on this investigation and like I say when this came up this kid the suicide attempt everything was um focused on this now because, oh, and, and oh, what else did I save in this? The night on, the temperatures did not dip below 25 noon, February 10th. Be on a lookout. This is all they did for this person, or more. For the next day of the 10th, there's be on a lookout. And this. Now, whether or not her white coat that she saw into the, that you saw in the, um, the um damn the um ATM and then this here says describe wearing a dark coat and I think if this is true because of it being cold out that night and getting into the accident I think she might have had pulled out another coat and put it over the white one but this I do not remember reading in any other article. That's why I, you know, screenshot this. Her hair wasn't 
pulled back, standing, but this is, here's the thing where they say standing five feet three inches tall and weighing about 120 pounds. Um, hey, get over here. Come on, get in. Bear with me a moment. A dog worse than a kid. But yeah, where she's standing five feet tall, this is where the, um, this is where it gets strange because State of the Moor was, la was last seen wearing jeans and a corrected her height to be about five feet seven inches tall. Now, this is where everybody gets confused. The Cecil's, the, the police officer Cecil's writing down this report and how could he know she's five feet tall? Unless he um got that up on the computer. Because I know now when your ID comes up, like I said in one of my videos on the computer, bear with me. So yeah, like I was saying, um, this is where the confusion comes in of all that Cecil might have killed or kidnapped her himself. And that's why he put in different uh, heights because of the simple fact that, uh, yeah, he didn't know, but he did know, and blah, blah, blah. But like I say, when you, when you, I'm sh for damn sure the computers and the police cars bring up your picture, your ID, your, um, um, everything. But yeah, but how would that happen if it was in her father's name? But I'm sure that when you put, and there's another thing, if you're on a, you have an insurance, and in Massachusetts, there's a law where if you have a friggin' vehicle on a friggin' road, and you have a driver driving it, that driver's got to be listed, or you can get, or, you know, I had this happen before. So drivers to the car, I'm sure damn well came up with Cecil's computer in the squat car. And, uh, and everybody says he probably had something involved. But where this freaking case spins out of control spiral, I don't think he did. I think he committed suicide because he himself had this stuck in his head. Being the last person known to know that this girl went missing, I think that drove him to insanity. Just like Bill, the fiancé, everything that has happened drove him to do what he's been doing. I mean, you got this person that's right in front of your face, and all of a sudden, gone. You know, people get to tend to lose their mind. Um, here we go with the Red Cross again. I'm looking into this again to see what comes on, but this all came up again. And this is what Billy was coming from. Another thing that, yeah, I mean... I've already stated that Billy didn't have nothing to do with it. And I'm going with all day, he didn't have nothing to do with it. But, of course, this goes on to say how he was coming from, you know, Texas to get to the airport to come here. And supposedly he made it to uh, one of the airports in New Hampshire. Got a ride from his parents. But he said that before he shut his phone off, like, you know how you're supposed to shut your phone off on a plane, put it on airplane mode, shut it off. He got that message, and that message tracked back. But then again, it says down here to turn and call. Sometimes, in some of this, it says it, it you know, um, don't pin no nothing, no phone, no nothing, because of the card number and pin. But after police determined the call was from Red Cross, officials say they considered the case closed on the phone, call another bad moment and like I said I've looked all over for Red Cross and the one that came up was in mass but I'm still gonna see if there's another one in New Hampshire but to me that person in that red truck maybe went to the Red Cross himself for something and she somehow got a hold of her phone maybe maybe she was in the back of the or in the truck, not in the back, but in the truck, knocked out. I think whoever kidnapped her also knocked her out. And when he was going to wherever he was going to his destination, you know, she probably woke up, got the phone, but 
being so whatever he didn't. Probably drugged, maybe drugged, maybe that chloroform over the nose to fall asleep type thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking happened. Or even got punched, knocked out. Boom, 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 boom. But that Red Cross is very crucial. And they canceled it all out of the friggin' closed it out of the case. So that right there is insane to me. That's what I'm waiting to hear for in one of these articles. Someone that has went to the Red Cross and asked about the red pickup truck. And you find that truck, you're going to find a goddamn killer. So, I mean, I screenshot that just to show again that this Red Cross thing is very crucial in the case. Where was Mora going? More of her friggin' car was facing westbound when she was supposed to be going east. That's the question. Um, you know, these are more suicidal. And all this comes up again. This is another thing about suicidal. There was no evidence of foul play. But you know what? Someone suicidal in the search they did. There would have been a goddamn body because she would have froze to death outside. And there would have been something there. So for that to be shooken out, it's sick. And here's another thing. Stowe, Vermont. Wells River, Vermont. Um, North Woodstock. Woodsville. I mean, I don't know why, who put this all up for what? But it's going over some things like Bill and, and uh, uh, Fred Father there had a held press conference here in Bethlehem. Bartlett is a ski resort, and three of them that I said that she could have been going to coming off the highway, Route 12, quick route. No tolls. Um, and it's saying this is where she was originally headed. That right there says that I was right on that. Um, this is something about Route 12 ends and meets up with this Kankamagas Highway. If she was traveling. Uh, Woodstock, Eastbound, Route 112. Uh, oh, these would be, to me, these things look like escape routes. Like I was saying, the Murray family stayed. This is as well as River Motel for several weeks. Fred Murray returned. This is where they usually would stay. And that's close to Route 112. Tunnel, and then she then you got the Stowe, Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, all them other ones going that way. And that's when I originally started this case, I thought she was going to Canada, and that would be out 191 straight up through there. But she takes a right turn, comes out here, it made no sense. But now everything that's twisted around and stuff like this coming up, yeah, it's just nuts. It's nuts, I mean, mapping out like this, but it makes no sense. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, the letter found, and then it goes on to say that there was no letter found, but a suicide note. And that all their family and friends said that her and Bill had any kind of, you know, disagreement relationship like anybody else. It wasn't nothing serious. He didn't kill her right. But yet there was a suicide note. And they kept saying this. And I don't know why. Because, you know, the red pickup truck. What was the red pickup truck? The one that told her to commit suicide? No. No, you idiots. They took her and killed her. Or he. But, um... I mean... That's pretty much what I got out of that. 
all this stuff that lays in this case that to me yeah that some of it is old and some of it to me is kind of new i don't think i read about the letter thing either so but yeah it goes on to say disappearance later appealed to the new hampshire governor in the same press release stone uh Oh, some more assistance. Yeah, they, they were all, it all goes on to say, yeah, that she wasn't suicidal. And for whatever reason, they came up with this literally bad investigation. Bad, why would they just assume someone, oh, they're just suicidal. And not, you know, it, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, all this stuff is, is new, old, but still insane. All these loose ends, every itch, which way you go, turn, twist, flip. Like, it's, this case is a maze. And I think the people are going to go crazy, like I always say, before they're going to find it. But I just wanted to share this kind of stuff because, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that's new, but possible suicide. And even the, and even the news people blew that up. So, I mean, it was like... Ah. But that other, like I said, that other one I found talking about the distance from the tree, that person put in perspective that she did hit a tree because he did measurements. That was pretty cool to find. And that came up out of nowhere too, so. All this stuff. I mean, look how much stuff that just keeps building. Man, I still got to make my phone call, though. I haven't got no word back, but because it's it's a time zone thing now. And, oh, man, it stinks. I'm still a little suspicious, but I want to get this call done. And hopefully that'll be done soon. Other than that, this case, man, just keeps taking insane turns, man. I don't know where else to go with this damn thing. <laughs> oh, man. Some new, some old. Be safe, take care, beware. Till the next video. Out.